This video is brought to you by us and the 2019 Disappointment PC T-Shirt. The best way to support Gamers Nexus and its special intros and in-depth testing is to wear a constant reminder of your disappointment in 2019's products. The GN Disappointment 2019 T-Shirt features major release dates for the year's worst fumbles, like corroded liquid coolers, bad GPUs, lackluster thermal pads, cheap plastic, and Intel, just in general. The tour dates are accompanied by GPU die and PCB diagrams on the front, and small touches on the back, like outlines of controllers, video cards, and CPUs. The shirts are high-quality prints and fabric made with soft 100% cotton or popular tri-blend. You can visit store.gamersnexus.net or click the link below to grab one now, starting at $19.99. This is our disappointment build for 2019. It's got the most disappointing, upsetting, or just generally uninteresting products that we've encountered for the year, and we have a useful map for it all, as you saw in the intro for this, where the back of our new Disappointment t-shirt has the tour dates for the 2019 Disappointment Tour, including a couple of notables like pre-built BIOS issues from iWay Power early in the year, uh, copyright strikes issued by The Verge earlier, the Asus Helios case, Zombie Load 1.0, Zombie Load 2.0, Plunder Vault came out after we got this shirt printed, but that is also worthy of note. And then our last item is year to date, Intel, which pretty much sets the tone for the whole thing. And it's really unfortunate because <sighs> Intel hasn't had a whole lot to talk about in the last year. And when it finally came out with things to talk about, they were not competitive. So anyway, if you want to grab the shirt, it's on store.gamersnexus.net. We are not going to be making those forever, not necessarily because it's intended to be limited, but because it's, it's 2019 now and it won't always be 2019, so it'll stop making sense to make those at some point. So grab them if you want them. We did sell through completely really fast last year. We'll probably do so again this year, and uh, we've got a link below if you want it. All right, so what this is versus what this isn't. This is a recap. It's kind of a rewind. Last year we made the joke that it's like YouTube Rewind except it's actually good, and we could probably make that joke again this year. It it's been brought to my attention that YouTube Rewind was not particularly liked for 2019. So some of the products to recap it's different from last year. Last year we could focus mostly on RTX, where the whole thing was it just works, and actually it didn't. It didn't work at all. In fact, it couldn't work or not work because there were no RTX titles for over 50 days post-launch. And also, the cards had memory artifacting issues that caused them to die or were dead on arrival. And it was pretty easy to, to call that the most disappointing product. This time it's shared. The disappointment is spread around equally. And part of that goes to the Q500L case you see here. The Stadia, not just the controller, but Stadia itself got a really heavy reference in our intro for this video. And I, we might do like, I, I might do a behind the scenes for some of the making of the disappointment intro for this year because there's a lot of thought that went into it this time. And we'll put it on the side channel if we do. But anyway, Stadia controller played a big role in it. We've got a quick, Quick cameo for the screwdriver and hopefully a screwdriver in the Swiss Army knife, referencing The Verge from last year, and then they also came up this year. The Cooler Master cooler in there is one of the worst we've ever tested, especially at about $100. CPU is the 10980XE, of course. What else would you use? A $1,000 CPU that even after a price cut exposing Intel's insane margin previously is still not competitive. And then Radeon 7. So let's look back at a year of what we've had to deal with in the review space. We'll run through everything or most of it on the back of the shirt, talk about some extras, go through all the worst products or biggest fumbles of the year just so everyone can appreciate it. And hopefully, hopefully we can look forward to an equally disappointing 2020. So first up is the NVIDIA RTX 2060's screws and glue. Not the 2060, but the assembly of the 2060. And a, a quick side note here, I'll apologize for the vocal quality. I, I lost my voice earlier, but we're back. So although many worse things were to come, the year kicked off with the RTX 2060 and what became the worst cooler assembly on a product we have ever worked with. Really right. impressively bad. The RTX 2060 itself, the GPU, was okay. It was reasonably competitive. It worked out of box, all that stuff. But the Founders Edition cooler design 
follows the same reckless abandon for sustainability and maintainable, serviceable products that the Google Stadia controller falls prey to. It's irresponsibly complex to get it open. It's so difficult to work with the 2060 that We'd imagine most RMA processes for the card will just resign to sending users a new card rather than fixing the ones that were sent in. NVIDIA took the worst aspects of its Founders Edition RTX coolers from last year, namely the fact that they had as many screws as they had RTX ops, and then added more glue and internal screws that needed right angle drivers to remove without destroying the soldered on power extension. This was all out of the vain desire you'd expect out of NVIDIA to move the power header to the edge of the card rather than positioning it where it makes sense, at the end of the PCB in the middle of the cooler. We hope NVIDIA improves its cooler designs in the future to be more function focused, mostly to reduce the complexity and ability to maintain the product. Something as simple as replacing thermal paste would be impossibly complex for most owners of the RTX 2060, and the 2060 Super FE cards, despite overall decent performance. That was just January 7th, too. In our best GPUs roundup for 2019, we gave you some insight as to the two GPUs we were most considering for the greatest disappointment. We were looking at both the GTX 1650 and the Radeon 7. And after that piece, the RX 5500 XT, had it launched in time, would have also been entered into the competition. Ultimately, while both the 1650 non-super and the Radeon 7 made the shirt, only one of them was worthy of co-starring with the 10980XE in the video. If you don't remember why the Radeon 7 was bad enough to get on the disappointment shirt, we can recap some of it for you. So a couple of lists, or a couple of items on a list, just a, a small list here that we have of reasons the Radeon 7 was so bad. One, the card was not ready for launch at all. That was the title of our review for the card. There are no partner models at all. Inadequate mounting pressure for which AMD tried to compensate with the Hitachi thermal pad is another reason you want partner models. High operating temperatures. It was loud at about 50 dB stock. No changes out of box. Puts it about 10 dB A above uh, all, most of the other <laughs> coolers that we were testing at the time. AMD called the Radeon 7 a gaming GPU in its CES 2019 announcement and made a whole lot of comments about gaming relating to the Radeon 7. One month later, approaching launch, AMD walked all of that back and then talking to media focused most heavily on creators. Five months after its launch, the 5700 XT launched at $300 lower price than the Radeon 7 and matched or sometimes exceeded Radeon 7 performance in gaming applications. Low availability means even if you wanted one early on, it was hard to get. The drivers were completely broken. If you got the card on launch day, you may have had a similar experience to us and a lot of reviewers and other first day adopters, which included, related specifically to some Asus motherboards like the Maximus, extremely popular high-end series. There were issues with power cycling, shutdowns, and black screens. This was under full stock, non overclocked settings, occasional black screens, screen locks that required hard shutdowns and complete power cycles to fix, uh, out of box crash events during benchmarks under full stock or auto settings with release day drivers. This particular bug also broke the driver so bad in one of our operating systems that the AMD clean driver install was unable to remove the remnants of what was broken. DDU was unable to remove the rem remnants of what was broken. And in checking the Windows registry, we found all manner of left behind pieces of the driver to the extent that it was easier <laughs> to just reinstall Windows. Fans getting stuck at 100% speed, clocks occasionally misreporting as 7,800 megahertz, temperatures <laughs> reporting as 65,000 degrees or something. Crashes during OC stability testing with the Radeon 7 were graceless to the extent that we sometimes had to reinstall the drivers to fix them. Wattman stat readout sometimes completely vanishing. The fan options reverting back to the previous version of Wattman despite a newer version having come out with launch. And then multicolored screen aberrations seemingly at random times, which you saw in our intro. If you're wondering why we chose the Radeon 7 instead of the GTX 1650 or the RX 5500 XT, that list is why. 
1650 non-Super was disappointing, as was the 2080 Super for basically being the third 1080 Ti. But there's a key difference. Both of those products worked at launch and were usable. The 2080 Super also performed objectively well, despite being horrifically boring and a waste of our time to review because it's a 1080 Ti. The RX 5500 XT, same boat. It's another RX 480. Incredibly boring, and we've seen that card being released for nearly five years now. But at least it mostly works. And at least the four gigabyte model is reasonably competitive with the same price 1650 Super. The Radeon 7 barely even turned on at launch. And frankly, we don't think it'd be right to split the spotlight between AMD and Nvidia when AMD's product this year was so much worse. We certainly didn't split it between AMD and Nvidia last year with, when Nvidia's product was so much worse for the launch. Moving on to two quick ones, The Verge. So we started our Something Positive campaign earlier this year when, uh, in about February, when The Verge issued a copyright strike against Bitwick Kyle for his parody of their PC build. And somehow our disappointment build wasn't targeted, but I guess didn't use enough that they could get away with it. So you'll see the Swiss Army Knife cameo in our intro referencing this. Ultimately, to our knowledge, The Verge's editor-in-chief never did meet our challenge to also do something positive by donating to charities. Uh, but our community did great things with that, so at least that's the upside. DLSS is another one. We really wanted to work this into the intro. Deep Learn Super Sampling, uh, also on the back of the shirt. But there was a ton going on already with Stadia, with the 10980XE, the Radeon 7, Q500L, and everything else. So we decided to leave DLSS out of the intro. If you missed DLSS, basically, don't worry, everything's better. The blurriness is intentional. We're using deep learning here to convert this 4K video into a 720p output. So it's just like what DLSS does for games. The Cooler Master Q500L was another of the major disappointing products for the year, and it was in contention with the Asus Helio Strix for most disappointing case of 2019. We ultimately decided on the Q500L, as we figured that no one expected a good case out of Asus to begin with. So although it was bad and a huge waste of money, it wasn't as deeply disappointing as the Q500L and its horribly inefficient ventilation and design in general. The case looks ventilated, but the actual ratio of steel to hole is leaning more towards steel. We ended up fixing it in later content, as you can, you can see if you call that a fix. And now we arrive to the GTX 1650. The GTX 1650 was dead on arrival, and at the time, it made a hell of a lot more sense to buy a new RX 570 for the same price or cheaper. The only advantage was lower power consumption. But in the budget buying market, power consumption has almost zero bearing on what people buy. They're looking to stretch their dollars the furthest. And the RX 570, or the 580, did that a lot more effectively at a similar price. The later launched 1650 Super redeemed Nvidia and went on to make the RX 5500 XT look bad by comparison. It, it made an embarrassment of AMD's newer product. So Nvidia sort of recovered somewhat gracefully, but that doesn't change the fact that the GTX 1650 non-Super was dead on arrival when it launched. The product made absolutely no sense to purchase. And if we move down the list on the back of the shirt for the disappointment build 2019, which again is on store.gamersnexus.net, you'll see that we next run into the Asus Helios case. The Helios was bad. At $280, Asus's arrogance was impossibly inflated and in competition with much smaller companies that produce much better products. It was hard to understand why Asus ever thought the price was acceptable. The company thinks that anything it puts its sticker on is good, and that was especially apparent with the Helios. The case offered nothing that was new, and was only able to achieve sort of acceptable thermal performance by brute forcing it with four fans. Except it performed worse than $80 cases with better configurations. For build quality and features, Asus tried to tick every box possible on the spec sheet. There are GPU supports, there's a vertical GPU mount, fan controls, LED controls, cable covers, and even a carrying handle, you know, for when you bring your 70 pound two foot tall computer back to your 2001 LAN party. The Define S2 Vision RGB by Fractal is another one of the worst cases we've looked at for the year. When we published this one, we said that Fractal wasn't even trying. It was as if Fractal threw in the towel out of desperation or frustration or both, realizing that it needed some of that sweet, sweet RGB to appeal to the cool kids. 
Unfortunately, Fractal's efforts came a few years late and were technologically outdated by the time they arrived. The Vision doesn't include an LED hub or a controller, but instead has a SATA-powered RGB switch with three buttons, which we also found on AliExpress for a few dollars. The switch is a bit like a dongle, except for RGB. Maybe Apple will get there one day. And it would have to be routed out of the power supply cutout in the case in order to even use it externally. Alternatively, you could remove the front panel every time you wanted to change the RGB LEDs. It was too expensive, it was poor performing, and it didn't even do RGB LEDs well, which was the whole point of the case. We can now move to the right side of our list of disappointments on the shirt. On August 20th, we reviewed the MSI Evoque 5700 XT and found that the card had some of the worst thermal performance we've ever seen for GDDR6 thermals. Disassembling the card revealed why pretty quickly. MSI couldn't be bothered to even center its thermal pads on the G6 modules. And the lack of thermal pads between the PCB and the backplate meant that the card ended up trapping heat against the backplate and the PCB and heating up the flip chip BGA memory. Just taking thermography of the backside wouldn't show this as you'd have to remove the backplate to get a shot of the PCB and then you'd also be removing the heat trap. MSI's findings internally matched our own and the company ended up later issuing a stopgap solution that better centered the pads on the heat source, but still didn't scale up the size of the pads. So half the issue was still there. The company did though add thermal pads to the backside, which helped in thermals in the revision too, but it still isn't worth buying even with those fixes. We revisited the Walmart overpowered PC from 2018 on August 31st of 2019, about one year after it launched and after our first video, just to see if Walmart had improved its terrible offering from the previous version. The revisit was done with probably one of our funnier special intros for the year, if you haven't seen it, and part of that humor was derived from the fact that the out-of-box experience involved a boot media not found error. You couldn't even turn it on and boot into Windows, and it's a pre-built. Walmart had not only improved nothing in a year, but had also seemingly abandoned the product, which is probably not surprising. Moving on to September 25th, we have another 5700 XT, to no fault of the GPU itself, mind you, and that's the XFX RX 5700 XT Thick Ultra. The XFX Thick should probably be renamed to the XFX Plastic, with two Cs, because the biggest disappointment with the card was the cheap McDonald's Happy Meal toy plastic that comprised the outer shell, ultimately ruining much of the card's performance potential. In our in-depth testing on the XFX Thick, we showed a number of charts that illustrated how much improvement was possible simply by removing the plastic outer shell. The shroud, mind you, could remain, but the plastic base plate, which is one of the most vexing decisions we've ever run into on a video card, was responsible for much of the poor performance. In case you weren't permanently scarred by what we found inside of the Enermax Threadripper Lictac CLCs, we can remind you with this section. When we opened about 16 or so of the Enermax Liktac TR4 coolers, we found so much corrosion and gunk that some of the cold plates popped off with a fizzy bang, almost like shaking a can of soda and opening it once the screws were removed. We've since received Liktac 2 coolers and have found similar corrosion, something you'll see in a follow-up research piece soon. Enermax clearly hasn't completely resolved the issue, it seems. We were most disappointed because we had made such strong recommendations for the cooler based upon performance when it first came out, but we had to revoke all of those recommendations after seeing the widespread corrosion and gunk buildup, which only really appears with time. Technically, the next item on our list would be the NZXT Smart Device 2 for its overall uselessness when coupled with NZXT Cam, but it's really not worth giving this one any additional airtime and we already talked about malware on PCs anyway. The next one would be Zen TDP. We won't go deep here because we already have a 40 minute video explaining it and we'll just send you there to watch it. But hardware journalism, more importantly, on October 25th, hardware journalism transmorgified into tabloid reporting more than usually when Tech Power Up decided to run with a questionable anonymous Reddit source, it's always a good source, that claimed NVIDIA was paying people to put cardboard boxes in the background of their video sets or in shots of B-roll showing cards. And Tech Power Up used us in the thumbnail because there are cardboard boxes on our shelf, ignoring the fact that there's also a lot of other stuff on the shelf like AMD parts. 
and not only is this stupid for a number of reasons, but one of the more disappointing aspects was the response from some people in the community where they said, suggesting in the comments, things like, well, it should be easy enough to remove all doubt by just filming the products without any competing products in the shots, right? Easy enough. While we could film an AMD video card without any NVIDIA cards in the shot, and we could show an NVIDIA card without any AMD cards in the shot, there are a few things wrong with this to point out. First of all, we can do what we want. Secondly, it's going to be a double standard. We all know the same people are going to complain when an NVIDIA device is shown without any AMD products in the shot. Uh, thirdly, who's really the shill if you're asking media to show you only one product when reviewing the product and not show competing products? That's called an advertisement. That's not a review. Anyway, aside from all of this, uh, the story basically died and Tech Power Up apologized, so we can all move on. Before the 10980XE and Stadia launches, we had originally positioned Red Dead 2 as a story for our disappointment build intro. That was ditched for better ideas later, but Red Dead 2 on PC was easily among the worst high profile game launches in the last couple of years. Yes, there are others, it's not alone, but Rockstar's launcher alone, brand new launcher, didn't even work or let people launch the game. The fact that the desktop shortcut was broken for 100% of people, and the fact that the game was riddled with so many bugs, all combined to make for a disappointing launch. Rockstar really improved its overall perception in the PC market in the last couple of years of GTA 5's availability. But it killed all momentum with the Red Dead 2 launch on PC. It was lazy, broken, and poorly supported, although we did like that one clip a user captured of the ultra low poly horses. That was worth all of it. Google Stadia was one of our heavyweights for the disappointment build and is one of the last two items on the shirt, one of the most important two. Our first experiences with Stadia involved not getting what we paid for in a timely fashion, working with a controller which has seemingly been designed to prohibit repairs, and once it was all working, encountering significantly more latency than the negative latency that Google literally promised. Then again, maybe it's negative negative latency, which would make positive latency, also known as latency. Stadia's controller was impossible for a reasonable consumer to open without inflicting some kind of permanent damage. If you're asking why you'd ever need to be able to open a controller, it's missing the point. We think this is by design to hurt consumers and their ability to keep products in service, forcing replacements and encouraging the damaging throwaway and replace mentality that's draining of one, your money as a consumer because a repair is cheaper, and two, rare earth metals for something stupid like a Stadia controller. As for the service itself, that part matters more. The latency was untenable in several games. Metro Exodus was completely unplayable. Thumper was, by standards of a rhythm game, somewhat unplayable, and our best case, mostly more difficult to play. Some of our tests showed latency in excess of 200 milliseconds, which is crazy when considering a standard end-to-end -end latency on our test bench, somewhere between 20 and 50, maybe 70 milliseconds, depending on the game. Stadia failed in all of its marketing. It failed to even produce the product with the advertised availability and features offered. It walked back its intent to ship a controller that could directly connect to routers and limit latency, and it resigned to saying that it'd provide many of its undelivered features later. And now we get to Intel. Intel is just, it's almost like, it almost doesn't even need to be on the disappointment shirt, it needs to be on the sad shirt. It's just sort of sad where Intel is right now. We want to see more from the company. This is like a mirror of what we were saying years ago when the FX 8370 was the best that AMD could put out. We wanted to see more from AMD because Intel was murdering them. Now it's the inverse where AMD is doing something like 90 plus percent of monthly sales to our viewers and Intel is left floundering around with products that it launched previously that now have an S at the end of the name. And the 10980XE, although it's technically sort of new, really is just a rehash of the 7980XE and the 9980XE, and it's not only boring, it is no longer competitive. There's not really any use cases we test for where it would make more sense to buy than some of the competing parts. The only reason to buy something like an X-Series low-end, and quotes, big air quotes there, part would be 
for deep learning to get the PCIe lanes, but there's still other options on the market for that. So Intel, with its plague of security vulnerabilities, including three major ones we listed in this video alone, and with its lackluster products that can't even really compete at a meaningful level other than the 9900K, but that came out <laughs> over a year ago. The KS doesn't count. It just has an S at the end of it. So Intel is easily the most disappointing for this year. And it's, it's not just one product. It's basically everything, which is insane. We really want to see Intel pick up where they left off and improve things and compete because that'll push AMD too, so that AMD doesn't become the new Intel and sit on the same CPU for a decade. But we'll see what happens. So that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. Make sure you pick up the Disappointment Tour shirt 2019 on store.gamersnexus.net. And uh, you can also click the link below. Thank you for supporting our fun intros like we did in this video. We don't do a ton of them, but they're fun to close out the year and really put things back into perspective. Subscribe for more. We'll see you all next time.